Hi, and welcome back to GDL Presents, wherein we profile a developer, dive into a little bit of their code and theory behind the process, and find out how exactly they make the really incredible things that they do. Today we have with us Hakim El Hatab. How's it going, Hakim? Hey, it's going really good, thanks. Thanks for having me. Cool. So, Hakim, uh, you are an interactive developer um, based in New York. You're from Sweden. You've made a bunch of really cool uh, labs. Uh, originally, you were a Flash developer, is that correct? Right, that's right. I used to work at uh, Fantasy Interactive and uh, worked on a lot of campaign sites, like uh, heavy on animation for Nintendo and that sort of thing. A site that lives for a short time but has the craziest things you can think of tornadoes just flung across the screen and, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, and um, you're kind of, you're, you're one of this cadre of uh, Flash to JavaScript developers that we saw, like you, Mr. Doob, uh, Seb Lee Delisle, uh, Paul Lewis, like this amazing talent when it comes to visuals and interactive uh, design. And all of a sudden, like, I, you know, being in the JavaScript community, we saw you and these other people coming in and starting to do these really impressive things. And we're just like, wow, thank you. Yes, um, there was a lot, yeah, lot to I learn. Think, I think that's really interesting. Uh, coming from a Flash background, you have that, that animation way of thinking. If you think about everything in motion. And then just as JavaScript was getting powerful enough to actually like replicate some of these things, that's where it got interesting for myself and a lot of the other names you mentioned as well, I think. Uh, when you can start producing things that we already did in Flash, but we could do it as good in JavaScript. Um, and that's been really exciting. And I think just from, from working on so many sites with heavy animations, you get into these nitty-gritty of easing equations and uh, just that right perfect sensation in the UI you should feel fast here, it should ease in and out, or it should do, I don't know, you tweak numbers for indefinitely. That didn't really exist in like typical HTML developer community. And, uh, now it's starting to happen more and more, though. People are coming in, learning JavaScript and animation at the same time, just because they're seeing a lot of good examples of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that in your projects in particular, we've seen a lot of detail when it comes to the subtlety of interaction um, that many people hadn't kind of realized you know, that is worthwhile to spend time on, but um, seen a lot of uh, your experiments. So I'm actually going to let's bring up one of um, your experiments now. Um, anyone can go visit these at lab.hakim.se. Uh, but there's some great stuff in here. Um, more recently, you've worked on uh, Avgrund and Many, um, which are pretty cool. You want to talk about these? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's start with the names, which I find funny myself. Yeah. Uh, I've gone for a full transition into Swedish names for everything I do. <laughs> so I am Swedish originally. I'm born and raised there. Um, and Avgrund and Many are two of the first Swedish names. It's going to keep going, kind of like Ikea. Uh, that's, my th that's my plan for it. Like so Avgrund is a uh, concept for, a, well, I think Chris Crayer expressed it the best way. It's a receding modal. So it takes the typical pop-up concept, but it also uh, places the page backwards in depth and blurs it out. So you really get that feeling of content being de-emphasized and pop-up being em emphasized. And here in Avgrund, you're using um... I guess you're just throwing a black background around everything. You're using a 2D transform to scale the background. Uh, a CSS filter for the blur? Is that how you're doing things? That's exactly it. You got it. It's, uh, the filter blur is kind of slow, so I've disabled it when I've used it myself on a couple of places. Um, but it adds that nice effect. It's still it's just a heavy operation to blur a whole page like that. Yeah. That's yeah. Really cool. That's actually it. And uh, so many. Um, Many is uh, a way to kind of hide a menu, but reveal it in kind of 3D space. Uh huh. Yeah, that started out just, just like uh, I had an idea for a cool concept. I didn't really think it was going to be very useful. Uh, but then after having built it out and seeing that it actually, I mean, it added some value to the page because you could hide a menu, you could reveal it without losing all of the content on the right side. Uh, so it was a hidden menu that still kept all of the content visible even if you expanded it. A lot of other menus will like expand on top of the contents, and you have to hide them to see the content again. Uh, plus, it just really looks cool. I don't know, like 3 d Totally looks cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is the latest version where you can, you can set it on any direction of the page. First off, it was just a concept for coming in from the left, and then I revised it and uh, open sourced it and yeah, packaged it up nicely so anyone can use it. That's really nice, yeah. 
This is great. Um, yeah, I've actually, we, we profiled um, Michael Deal um, earlier on this program, and he's already using uh, both of these experiments in, in his work. So I'm seeing a lot of uh, solid adoption already uh, for some of these UI concepts. What kind That's of, good. what kind of um, like inspires you to explore these interaction, uh, interaction ideas? Uh, I think that's what's always inspired me to even work in the field that I work. Uh, just interfaces and interaction has always been what's exciting to me. Uh, I studied digital animation, which kind of got me into like the flash scene and an animation in general, not even just interactively, but video as well. And then got into flash and did some very heavy lifting and animation, but then now lately I'm mostly interested in building like useful UI components. So he's uh, not thing, nothing extreme anymore. I want to go through more to useful or utility instead of uh, cosmetics. I don't know. That's uh, sort of where I'm going. Um, I want to bring up a experiment right now, which might fall into the cosmetic side of things, perhaps. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, this is stroll.js, uh, and so stroll is a, a small little library that applies effects uh, to a list as you scroll through it. Um, and so there's a number of different 2D and 3D effects that you can kind of uh, experience as you're throwing through a, scrolling through a big list. Yeah, there's been a lot of contributions as well. So I only started out with about eight of them, and then people started adding to them like crazy. Um, so there's a bunch of different styles on there now that I didn't think of myself. But I built the, the framework for it, I guess, and then it was easy enough to add other styles. Yeah, and this was a fun project. Uh, I noticed, especially when uh, when it was open sourced, uh, I got I personally got really excited. I hopped in there, I started viewing the source, and I was like, I think we could maybe do this a little bit, you know, faster. Um, and so, actually, I'll bring up uh, now uh, what I did when I saw it first the first time, which is um, we we had recently added a feature to the Chrome DevTools where you can essentially get a more or less a rendering profile. Um, so I'll do that now. So this is in timeline and frames, and I'll record a little session and scroll a little bit. And so what happens is we're able to um, capture a little area, and then I'm going to narrow that down. And uh, we can zoom in to basically see the length of all the frames. And in some of these cases, some of these frames um, become uh, quite long. So the target, the target length of a frame is 16 milliseconds. Um, but in these in some of these cases, we have uh, frames around 70 milliseconds. And so sometimes with this tool, you get a good idea of um, exactly what's taking so long. Um, and in this case. Uh, there's a recalculate, uh, recalculate style that takes a full 20 milliseconds. Um, and uh, we can click over to kind of see what exactly, what line in our script caused the recalc style to happen um, and see. So what, what uh, I and a few other developers did early on was kind of look at this and identify where we could optimize things. Maybe we could avoid hitting this particular line of code um, on all loops and do it more infrequently. Um, but there was a, I think. And you pulled it off really well. Yeah, yeah. And I think lately there's been a, a few more tools recently to kind of uh, get the browser side perspective of how exactly um, things are uh, happening, right? So, like from a developer tools side, we can get a better idea of, of how to improve um, this work. Is there anything that, like, is there any normal. Um, Workflows that you've gone through for dealing with um, improving the the runtime performance of your experiments. Oh yeah, absolutely. Not only my experiments, but even my daytime work. Um, it's all about optimization, and even because now JavaScript and HTML is being used for more and more heavy production. What used to be Flash, these really heavy interactive productions, animation productions, and then when we do that in HTML, we need the tools to analyze it and profile it, and this. Is, really starting to pay off. I mean, the tool set is incredibly good. I'm sort of like seeing that as my future editor for code as well. I can do everything in there. So uh, I've definitely been using Timeline as well, um, some of my projects. It's been very helpful. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, 
So we'll switch it's over. Worth, it might be worth mentioning though on the scroll effects there. Yeah. Um, that was, was also remade, remade into a mobile experiment when uh, Chrome experiments open up for mobile submissions. So uh, I rebuilt it or did a V2 on it that does support touch events and uh, it had to be, I had to build my own momentum scrolling, you know, that kind of feeling. Yeah. Because I couldn't use the, um, there's this overflow scroll for, uh, um, for mobile Safari specifically, right, that does momentum scrolling automatically for you, but I couldn't do that because you can't read the positions of the list items then uh, while it scrolls with momentum. So uh, I wrote my own. Anyway, you should check that out. It's pretty cool. It looks cool on an iPhone. Very cool. And I think, um, is that at mobile.chromexperiments.com? Yeah, that should be it. Actually, if you just hit chromexperiments.com on your uh, phone, you'll get there. Ah, uh, true, true. Yeah. Um... Yeah, there's a lot of really uh, powerful um, experiments there that are optimized for the for the touch experience. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of good stuff. Cool. That was an interesting performance change. Yeah. An interesting performance change, right? Yeah, um, dealing with like you know s slower hardware, less memory, um, kind of a, a bit of exactly. it is is trial and error to find out how far you can push things. Right, and I, th I don't know, I guess at the time I didn't have a good profiling tool for mobile. That's starting to get better as well. It, uh, definitely very helpful, but uh, it was sort of like a black box. Yeah. Um, do you use, do you use uh, debugging tools for mobile now, or what's your workflow there? I just started using, the because they come built in now to Safari 6.0, yeah. um, and it's really, really fast. I started using that uh, for the mobile work that I do. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's been I personally experimented with um, yeah the the Safari six uh, remote debugging, the Chrome on Android remote debugging, um, and also Adobe Shadow. It doesn't have all the capabilities of your typical um, WebKit inspector, um, but it's but it's very convenient. Um, and so I tried Adobe Shadow as well. I guess my only complaint there was the response time was a little bit slow. Uh, uh, okay. Just the communication in between. Maybe it was my setup. I don't know. It felt a lot slower. OK, cool. Um, great. So I wanted to shift over to uh, a project that I think a lot of people have seen, and that is Reveal.js. Uh, so Reveal.js is a, uh, a slide framework? Is this? It's a presentation framework. HTML presentation framework. I like it. That's what I usually call it. It's, it's just a presentation framework built on top of HTML and using your browser to create fully fledged presentations that you typically create in uh, desktop software. This is a pretty popular space for HTML right now. There's a lot of similar frameworks. Um, I guess over the time, Reveal.js has differentiated itself as like a really feature-rich framework. Um, it's just happened over time. We've add, added many more features since the original one was so, so simple. But now it has markdown support, and it has PDF exports, and themes, and transition styles, and uh, you name it, a lot of things in there. Very nice. Yeah, um, I've used it a lot. And actually, uh, we had an internal um, conference inside um, inside Google a little bit ago. And uh, one of the engineers who works on Chrome's rendering path uh, took a look. We, we were both uh, sharing a presentation um, and using Reveal.js. And so he actually uh, dove into um, some of the techniques that were being used for Reveal.js and found um, a few inefficiencies where you could actually eke out a slightly better performance. Um, and I think one of them was my fault. I was applying a, a z-index to, to some of the headlines. And, and when you apply a z-index, it actually bumps that render layer out of the rest of the render layer. So like, um, let's say we have a, a slide and we're transitioning it with the transform. Um, having a z-index on one of the elements inside that um, brings it to another thing, and so that has to be man manipulated separately, um, and so we were getting overall a slower FPS number, um, and so that's really interesting because I use uh, 3D transforms inside of the slides as well for these hover effects on my links. Yeah, uh, they do like a 3D roll, um, which I thought looked nice, but that's that must suffer from the same uh, performance limitations then. So probably, yeah, yeah. You, in general, you want it. Um, bring down the number of render layers that you're manipulating at the same time um, and mm -hmm. keep that to a minimum. But um, so yeah. yeah, that was a small optimization that, that we found. I mean, I guess the page gets uh, 
caught as a, or gets painted as a bitmap as soon as it goes in through GPU and 3D transforming. So if you don't have to redraw that bitmap while it's in perspective, I assume it's going to be a lot faster. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, Reveal.js has been great. Um, and I, and I, I particularly like um, just editing my slides in HTML, um, bringing it out, and having a great interface on it. And um, I know a lot of other people, including Brendan Ike, uh, creator of JavaScript, he's used to this uh, framework. It's pretty rad. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. I was uh, really happy to see that. I also watched uh, what's that? It was Lisbon JS uh, conference last week, um, and some crazy number of people was using Reveal JS for the presentations, like seven or so. Uh, it was a lot of fun. That's really rewarding. I think that inspires me to keep going. Otherwise, most of my projects are fairly short-lived. Right? I'll uh, wrap them up and kind of just place them on GitHub and not touch them again. Uh, but real JS, I'm definitely continuing on developing and improving on for the long term. Yeah. And so you've actually kind of evolved the reveal the reveal JS scene um, re more recently with the release of reveal.io. Um, I guess you would pronounce it that way. Um, pronunciation doesn't yes, really exist it. on the internet. Uh, I so. tried to get reveal I O actually spelled out, but uh, somebody else took it. Oh, okay, cool. Um, you want to talk about kind of what the idea behind reveal I O is? That worked out. <laughs> so you don't. Yeah, no, the break was perfect. <laughs> hey, what's up? Well, that was a big break. Yeah, well, that's why we have post production like that. Uh, all oh. right, so let's go ahead and uh, go back to Paul. Are you comfortable down here? You look stuck. You look stuck to me. You look stuck. <laughs> you don't look happy. Sir, you are stuck in molasses. This is not rad. <laughs> not <laughs> rad. You said rad, and it's like. <laughs> <laughs> like, you I am the internet. Uh, I am opposed to this word. I will break for you. That was a very big break. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. How are you? You're doing? good now. All right. Uh, still doing good. My my connection not so much. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's dropped. Just right. done. Let's zoom a little bit. Let's see if I realized. And you're like, no, it's cool. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know exactly what you were asking. I'm sorry. So the yeah. first ones, I assume there were one or two that you were expecting to show that were not displayed. Yeah. Okay. How does that make you feel? I mean, do we want to repaint the whole thing in a day, today, or do you want to just go with what we have? Mm. Like, do we want to showcase all of his products? Do you want to give him a better wired like it would be ideal, but I don't can know. I shoot like uh, um, like twenty seconds of each just when we're done with Hakeem, and then you just throw it on? Yeah, I've never done that. Well, I can I try. Do it and oh, I'm back now. Hey. Wow, quality's actually good now too. That's weird. Yeah, of all, of all the things that we've gone through, those particular demos would be easy to kind of okay, cool. merge in okay. later. Like, there's yeah. a lot of sections where we're talking for a while, and it would just I like. I think I can just splice it into the vid, so it should be fine. Yeah, I didn't have any. Um, my our conversation wasn't very specific about what was happening on screen, so. Okay, sure. All right. Yeah. All right, Hakeem. So we're gonna reboot. Uh, just meaning no, not for real. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By reboot, I mean you start. Um, so, Paul, uh, I'm going to put the camera back on you. Uh, and then we're going to lead into the question you asked about Reveal IO, yeah. uh, which leads to CV Tension Reveal IO site. Right. So, we're going to be on 
Matt is going to help you, and we'll just go when you're ready. So when you start talking, we'll just like. Great. Talk to you. So we're starting for reveal out. Okay. Yep. Right. Uh, um, so I said, and this is, we've kind of continued this. Okay. And then I say, okay, got it. So Hakeem, uh, tell me a little bit about Reveal IO. So Reveal IO is the um, the HTML or the online editing suite for Reveal JS, where you uh, don't have to write plain HTML, which is what Reveal JS is. Instead, you can come in and you can write it in uh, WYSIWYG editor, so you see the uh, um, well, you see what you're going to get exactly. Um, it's also a bit of I'm trying to build out a bit of a not a community around it, but a hosting for your presentation, so you don't even need to download them to present them elsewhere. You can keep them online and just present them on the, on the server. Um, and it's, uh, it was launched three weeks ago now, I think, three or four weeks. Uh, it's been under development for a while, though, at a collaboration, actually, with a friend, Harshad, from uh, India. He's doing the server-side work. Um, and it's uh, gained a pretty good um, number of users so far. It's been like 3,000, 3,500 users in the first couple of weeks. Um, most people are just playing around with it though, but I think uh, there's a definite audience for it. I've seen a lot of good things coming out as well. Yeah, um, it's it's really nice, and it kind of collects a few of your different um, uh, a few of your different tech, uh, experiments. The Avgrind um, I saw just a moment ago. Um, mm -hmm. There's Reveal, yeah. and uh, there's a lot of other really nice. Uh, yeah, here. I'm trying to uh, trying to use my own stuff wherever I can just to. Uh, I mean, if I if I end up using something or one of my previous previous experiments, then it feels like I've done something right, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so that's sort of the the thinking. Yeah, so you can save a deck or presentation. You can publish the presentation. It will land on the home page, and popular presentations will group up there. Um, basic level of editing, but still very much in development. This is another project that I I guess I expect to be working on for a longer time, not just something I put out there and I'm done with. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, so uh, so do I, I don't have an ability to, so I know that I can author in Markdown for Reveal.js. Uh, Reveal.io, I guess because we have WYSIWYG, we don't really need to edit in Markdown. It's just a full. No, yeah. I guess that's the, thing, that's the thinking around it. You wouldn't need it. But there are some really like, important core features which aren't in, it, in yet. But I, I really believe in releasing it early, um, putting it in front of people and seeing what they do with it, and then listening to feedback instead of trying to resolve every case before you release it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, th OK, question. This, this view right here, uh, where I can view my presentations, um, we have essentially mm -hmm. this thumbnail. Um, how are we, we making this here? The thumbnail? Yeah. The thumbnail is a minified version of the presentation. It's just the presentation itself, the, oh, okay. the same markup. Same styles, everything, and then a scale is applied to it to make it tiny. Um, it's kind of like a ghetto th thumbnail. 2D transform scale? Yeah, that's it. Nice. Um, so it actually has a little bit of additional markup in there, because it doesn't just have the first slide. It has the other slides as well. Uh, some optimization to be done. But it's an easy way to do a thumbnail instead of having to do uh, image processing on the server and storing all of that. Um, it makes the server side work a little bit more lightweight. Which I'm always for. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Um, and so the last thing I wanted to talk about uh, real quick is um, this wonderful project that you worked on uh, while you were at Fantasy Interactive. And this is the 20 Things I Learned About uh, the Web um, ebook. I mean, it's, it's a yeah. book on the web. Yeah. But it's like the most book on the web book there is. Um, so the experience is very similar to a, a real book. And um, there's a lot of techniques in here that that people hadn't really seen, um, especially outside of Flash before. So you want to talk a little bit about how you built this? Sure. Uh, I think this came out early 2011. Um, yep. And you know, I was working at Afi, so we collaborated with Google and the Chrome team. Um, the techniques about, uh, there's a lot of HTML. Well, we tried to use everything we could that was kind of leading edge at the time. So uh, we're using, for instance, local storage to keep a bookmark. If you go back to the uh, book after having visited it once and just dropped out at a page, it will bring you back into that page again. And we're using offline or cache, application cache, 
since it's uh, it's a very large book, there's many illustrations in there. It gets pretty heavy in kilobytes. So there's uh, cache manifests, which, which stores all of that on your computer for the next time. Um, and we are using HTML5 History API. So every book or every page has a unique URL, and you can link into that. Um, there's The book has been translated in a bunch of languages, languages as well. But I guess the most interesting part, and one, one thing that everybody asked about, is the uh, page flip. So the page flip is one very big canvas element on top of the whole book. Um, and then that, in conjunction with taking the page, which is on the right side, and you're shrinking it downwards, uh, having the overflow be hidden, looks, it makes it look like a mask. It's, it's basically a, a magic trick. Uh, the page underneath does just get covered by the, the, uh, the paper that's coming up on top. It gets covered, otherwise it would be a hard cut where the page is actually being masked. But instead, there's a layer on top with paper, which makes it look nice. You pull it over there, and then there's a lot of shading. I spent a good amount of time on figuring out the shadows and the highlights and the paper and all that to get that just right. Um, yeah, and we also um, I wrote an article about it as well. Yeah, so, um, so people can check this out. This is at um, it's on HTML5 Rocks. So if you just mm -hmm. look for HTML5 Rocks page flip, uh, you should be able to read this uh, great article by Hakim, um, all about kind of this particular effect, uh, the markup. The, the theory, the science, the math behind it, um, and, uh, and you know, steal the code and use it in, on your own site. Um, oh, yeah, definitely steal it. <laughs> steal everything I do. <laughs> I like that. I like it. Um, cool. Yeah, so where do you, um, you use, I mean, there's a lot of techniques in this, in this uh, 20 Things I Learned um, project, and that was a while ago, um, and you always kind of are staying up to date with, what's available in browsers. Um, how do you kind of manage uh, keeping track of what's available um, and the best way to do things? That's a good question. Uh, I think most of it is I re get really snowed into one specific feature that I get super excited about and I try to master it. So for a very long period of time, that was Canvas, 2D Canvas, just drawing all kinds of animations. And then recently, it's been CSS and CSS trans transforms and transitions in particular. I've been using a lot. Um, I think I, uh, I stay up to date with it by seeing something that excites me and then just using it 100 times over uh, to see what I can pull off with it. And then in the end, it ends up being a loop of inspiration, I guess, because you create something that inspires something else. Um, a good example is what you're looking at now. I mean, I, was, I, didn't, I had no idea what I was doing when I started this. I put this is a good example because it's uh, one of those cases where I sat down and I placed a bunch of dots on the screen. And then by doing that, I start getting inspired into connecting lines between the dots and maybe moving the dots around physically in relationship right, in a relationship to each other. And uh, you start getting a visual output that's pleasing. And that's sort of where I land on something like this. Uh, it's not much planning. It's mostly uh, iteration. Yeah. it's. Uh... Very cool. Um, I especially like, yeah, um, I mean, we saw this a little bit with, with kind of the Brett Victor getting immediate feedback um, ideas. But there's a lot, especially inside of the creative JS realm, where you can kind of just start with an idea and just experiment until you find kind of the visual that you like, the interaction style that you like. Um, there's a lot of flexibility there that you normally don't have in other parts of front end development. That's true. It's also um, about doing it as a personal experiment, which means there is no pressure on you doing a specific thing. I think the scariest part is having a specific picture in mind and trying to achieve that exact thing, because uh, then you limit yourself from actually, I don't know, it's more natural to come up with the thing you're doing as you do it. You can never have a complete picture and just execute on that idea. You have to be adaptive throughout. Yeah, absolutely. Well. Um... There's a lot more experiments that we could go through that you've done that are just totally change how people look at um, at experiencing the front end of, of web of the web. But um, I, I guess we'll cut it there. Hakeem, thank you very much for joining us. This has been fantastic to dive into some of these projects. Um, and uh, and thank you. Um, people can check you out uh, your your blog and and kind of some of your experiments at hakeem.se. Um, 
You're over on Twitter at Hakimel. Uh, I think GitHub too at Hakimel, correct? Yeah, that's it. Cool. Um, and uh, definitely take a poke around uh, some of all these projects. View source, pretty much all of them are on GitHub. Um, people can can go fork them, uh, make tweaks, uh, you know, and then certainly make use of uh, some of them in any upcoming projects. Um, it's yeah. great stuff. So thanks again. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Cheers.